All right, here we have a wonderful example where we're going to actually be putting everything together that we have been doing all along with this stuff. Um, we have a function here, and it says, first of all, find the degree of the polynomial, determine the end behavior, that is, find the power function that it resembles for large values of absolute value of x. So for part a, we need our degree, and then we need our power function. So let me write those out here. Power function. Okay, as far as the degree of the polynomial, we would have to multiply this all out to be able to see the highest power of x. So this would be an x squared times x times x would be an x to the fourth. That's actually our power function. Remember that highest, that leading term. And then the degree would have to be a fourth degree equation because of that highest power. So we've done part A. Part B says to find x and y intercepts. Alright, so let's start off with our x intercepts. Now we could um, solve this, you know, we could say, what do we know? We know that um, the x, uh, now y value of 0 in every single x intercept or we can use what we've been learning about this uh, to find these. Remember, they come from each one of these factors. So we're going to have an x-intercept from this first factor at an x value of 2. So that would be an x-intercept of, oops, let me write that better, 2 comma 0. And then from the second uh, factor, we would have negative 2, 0. And then from the third factor, we would have negative 4, 0. Um, okay, now, as since I know what's going to be coming up um, here on, actually, this is part F, it's asking us to draw a complete graph by hand. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out a place for us to start putting in all of our information. We have x-intercept at 2, 0, and an x-intercept at negative 2, 0 and one at negative four zero. So I know these are my x-intercepts to begin with. Um, so we're going to go ahead and mark those. I may, might even mark those in blue so that we can see the difference between that and the actual graph itself. All right, now these are our x-intercepts. What about our y-intercept? Well, what do we know about every single y-intercept? We know that the x value is zero. So we can use our equation and find the y-intercept. That means y will equal 0 minus 2 squared times 0 plus 2 times 0 plus 4. Okay, so that means, let's see, 0 minus 2 would be negative 2 squared is 4 times 0 plus 2 is 2 times 0 plus 4 is 4. So 4 times 2 times 4 would be 32. So our y-intercept is the point 0, 32. Well, that's going to be way up here somewhere. I'll even go ahead and mark that 0, 32. Okay, so we know this much so far. Let's see what else we know. Part C says determine whether the graph crosses or touches the x-axis at each x-intercept. So let's look at each one of these um, x-intercepts here. Our first one was 2, 0. That came from this first factor. It has a multiplicity of 2, which means that it's an even multiplicity. That tells us that the graph will touch here at this x-intercept. For the x-intercept of negative 2, 0, that came from this factor. It has a multiplicity of 1, which is an odd number, which tells us the graph is going to cross at this x-intercept. Then for the last one, the negative 4, 0, again, we have a multiplicity of 1. It only happened one time, which is odd, and tells us that the graph will cross there. So we know it's going to cross at both of these x-intercepts, but it will touch at this one. All right, what else? Let's see, let me go back up here. Um, part D says graph F using a graphing utility. We're going to pick that one up in the part two video.